In this video, I'm going to use Newton's second law to solve a problem where there are balanced forces, where the forces acting on an object are in equilibrium. And so the object's not going to be moving, and it's not going to be accelerating. So more often than not, we think of uh, Newton's second law as the net force equals mass times acceleration, where some unbalanced net force would cause an acceleration. But we can also use Newton's second law in situations where the net force acting on an object in one or more directions is equal to zero in an equilibrium type of situation like this. And so here I have a 12 kilogram traffic light that is suspended by two wires, a classic example of an equilibrium problem. And what we would like to do is use the fact that the net force in both the x and y directions are zero to find the tensions in each one of the wires supporting this traffic light. And in uh, the diagram that I have drawn here, you can see that the two wires supporting the traffic light uh, make different angles with the horizontal. And so the wire on the left is at an angle 15 degrees above the horizontal, and the wire on the right is 20 degrees above the horizontal. And then also in that diagram, I've indicated the positive x direction will be to the right, and the positive y direction will be upward. In order to find the tension in each wire, I'm going to need to understand the directions and uh, magnitudes of all of the forces acting on the traffic light. And so in order to do that, I need to draw a free body diagram for this traffic light. And so what I'm going to do is instead of uh, destroying the diagram that I have drawn, uh, just to the right, I'm going to draw a dot, a red dot. And on that red dot, I'm going to draw all of the forces acting on the traffic light as uh, force vectors, arrows that start on and point away from the dot that I've drawn. And so maybe uh, this dot represents that place at the top of the traffic light where those two cables are connected. The first force that I know that acts on the traffic light is the weight of the traffic light. And that points uh, directly down in the negative y direction. So I can draw a downward arrow, something like that. And I know that this vector, this force vector, is the weight of the traffic light. And I'm going to write that as the mass of the traffic light times the acceleration due to gravity. The other two forces that act on the traffic light are the two tensions that point up uh, to the left and up to the right. And so those two forces might be written something like this. So the, the tension that's going up and to the left looks something like that. And maybe I call that T1. And I'm calling that T1 because I know that the tension in the other wire is not necessarily the same. In fact, it shouldn't be the same because the geometry of the wires isn't symmetric, and so the tensions sh should be different. So the other wire is at a slightly larger angle. And there, I'll call the tension T2. And so these are the three forces that act on the object. And this is a 20 degree angle and a 15 degree angle. In order for this object to be at equilibrium, uh, the net force in the x direction needs to be equal to zero and the net force in the y direction needs to be equal to zero. And if that's true, then I should be able to look at my free body diagram carefully uh, and at least make some statements about what the free body diagram should look like. I don't know that I've drawn a perfect free body diagram, but in order for the net force in the y direction to be equal to zero, for example, I would need all of the forces in the y direction to add up to zero. And the way that that could happen is if the vertical component of this tension force, T1, so maybe I could call that uh, T1y, and the vertical component of this tension force, the vertical component of T2, I could call that T2y. The sum of those two vertical components of those two tension forces should be equal to all of the downward force acting on this traffic light. Right? So the sizes of those two force vectors should be approximately equal to the downward force of gravity due to the weight of the traffic light. 
And so that's what's happening in the vertical direction. And then in the horizontal direction, I should know that the horizontal component of T1, which I could call T1x, and the horizontal component of T2, which I will call T2x, the components of uh, those forces, T1x and T2x, should be equal and opposite as well because those are the only forces in the horizontal direction and so they have to add up to zero. And so as I'm starting to write these net force equals zero equations, I should be able to use some of those facts to help me out and write the equations. Let's start by writing uh, an equation for the x direction. And the way that I'm going to write this is I'm going to write the net force in the x direction is equal to, first I know it's equal to zero, and that's because the object is not accelerating. The two forces that act on this traffic light in the x direction are T2x and T1x. T2x is positive because it points to the right, and T1x I'll call negative because it points to the left. And so these two forces added together equal zero. And so by rearranging this a little bit, I see that T2x is equal to T1x, as I stated earlier. And so what is a way that I could express T1x and T2x into, uh, in, in terms of some variables that maybe I, I know? And so the first thing I'd like to uh, look at in the free body diagram is the fact that T1x and T2x are both the cosine component of those vector triangles that I've drawn. Right, first looking at T2x, T2x could be expressed in terms of T2 and the angle that it makes with the horizontal. Right, And I could write T2x as instead T2 cosine of 20 degrees. And I could do the same thing uh, with T1. T1x could be expressed as T1 times the cosine of 15 degrees. T1 times the cosine of 15 degrees. And so uh, one thing I could do is I could figure out what the cosine of 20 and the cosine of 15 degrees is because those are just numbers, right? And so the cosine of 20 uh, turns out to be something like uh, 0 0.940. And so that number times T2 is on the left side of the equation and the cosine of 15 looks something like 0 0.966. And so I have a relationship here between T1 and T2. Right? In fact, I could divide both sides of this equation by 0 0.966 and I could get that T1 is equal to some number times T2 and that would just be 0 0.940 divided by 0 0.966. And it turns out uh, that that number is 0 0.973, something a little bit uh, less than 1, times T2. And so here is an equation that, that should be really important to us, because if we can find a way to figure out either T1 or T2, the actual number, then we could plug it back into this equation and find the other one. And so I think what you'll find is, uh, when we write the equation for the x direction, uh, we get one equation. When we write the equation for the y direction, we'll get another equation. And it's only going to be the combination of those two equations that allow us to determine the numeric values of t1 and t2. And so now we've just got to do the same thing, but for the y direction. So let's start in the same way that we did for the x direction. The net force in the y direction now is equal to zero. And I know that T1y plus T2y, and I write plus because T1y and T2y both point upwards. T1y plus T2y minus mg, the weight of that traffic light, equals zero. And so the next step that I could take is I could write this as T1y plus T2y equals the weight of the traffic light. As I said, those two upwards com vertical components of those tension forces need to add up or equal uh, the weight of that traffic light. 
Next, I'm going to express T1y and T2y in terms of the sine component of that vector triangle that I've drawn in the free body diagram. Right, so if T1x and T2x were the cosine components of the trial of the uh, free body diagram, those vector triangles, then T1y and T2y are the vertical components, which are the sine components of those vector triangles. And so for T1y, I can express that as T1 sine of 15 degrees. And for T2y, I can express that as T2 sine of 20 degrees equals. I know what the mass of the traffic light is because that was given in the problem. And so this is a 12 kilogram traffic light. So 12 times. And the acceleration due to gravity could be expressed as 9.8. And so once again, if I figure out the sine of 15 and 20 degrees and I uh, do some a little bit of math, I'll get a, a separate relationship between T1 and T2. So starting off on the left, the sine of 15 degrees is something like 0 0.259. And so 2, 0.259 times T1 plus the sine of 20 degrees is roughly 0 0.342 times T2. And on the right hand side I have 12 times 9.8 which is about 117 Point six. There are several ways that I could go from where I'm at right now to get to the final answer, uh, but I think the, the step that makes the most sense to me is I have this expression for T1 on the left hand side, but my equation on the right hand side also has these two variables in it. So let's go ahead and take the expression for T1 on the left and substitute that expression in on the right here. And so what does that look like? It looks something like 0 0.259 times T1. And on the left-hand side, I know that T1 is equal to 0 0.973 times T2. Plus, and the rest is the same. Right, so I make that substitution, and now on the right-hand side, the equation that I've been uh, working with only has the variable t2. And so I should be able to distribute this point 0.259 into the first term, which I believe gives me 0 0.252 t2 plus 0 0.342 t2 equals 117.6. And so if we add those two terms together, if we add the two terms together, we get 0 0.594 T2 equals 117.6. We divide both sides by 0.594, and we'll get a numerical answer for T2. And I think that the answer that we're going to get for T2 is T2 equals about 198 newtons. Right, forces are measured in newtons. Uh, this is a tension force, and so the the tension in wire number two is approximately 198 newtons. And so now that we know what the tension in wire two is, we can plug that into the equation on the left in that green box and determine the tension in wire number one. And so T1 equals 0 0.973 times T2, which is 198 newtons. Which gives us T1 is a little bit less than T2, and it is approximately 193 newtons. And so that slight difference in the angle uh, of support in that traffic light creates a slight difference in the tensions or uh, the amount of force that these wires have to exert on the traffic light in order to keep it in equilibrium. Hopefully this problem serves as a good example of how to apply uh, Newton's second law in the case uh, where an object is in equilibrium. Where we can take an object uh, and create a free body diagram and our knowledge of the fact that the net force in both the x and y directions uh, is zero allows us to write some equations and solve for variables that maybe we wouldn't be able to solve for otherwise.